Alright, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys don't know me, my name is Alicia. I'm a travel vlogger and I just came back from Phuket, Thailand to get my SDCW and stewardess license to work on a super yacht. Now in this episode, I essentially just want to break down how it is I afford to travel because there's this huge misconception that everything is just being paid for by someone else and that is not true. So here I'm going to explain a couple ways that you can afford to do this lifestyle and it's not one way there are many different ways you don't even have to watch this episode if you find it boring or disinteresting but it is a good way to have creative ideas and thoughts how to financially be able to afford this lifestyle so with that being said let's get started so Back in 2017, I started a university degree and I had just gotten out of a bad breakup and essentially what I felt like I'd missed out on my life was travel. I was missing my time to expand my mind, grow my experiences and meet different cultures. So essentially what I had done is I decided to work full time while I was in school full time. And I picked a degree that would have the least amount of brain power, so to speak, so that I could work full time and still be able to live a balanced life. So at the time, what I was doing is I basically was just making money, saving it, and spending it. Not doing anything beyond that, just making, saving, spending. And don't get me wrong, at the time, I've had the most amazing experience that are immeasurable. However, I definitely, looking back, would do things a lot differently, knowing what I know now. Fast forward three years later, I wanted to do an exchange in France because my degree was in French. They basically told me all my free credit choice courses that I had taken at the beginning should have been taken while I was abroad. So all my major courses would not count towards my degree if I took them in France. So here I am, and mind you, I saved $25,000 at the time. This is pre-COVID, and I'm very proud of myself for that. It doesn't seem like a lot in retrospect. I don't know, maybe not very for you. I, I, maybe it is. For me, it doesn't seem like a lot, but... At the time, I saved $25,000 to go away, and it had just gone out the window. Now, looking back, I wish I had invested that money. What I actually did with that money is I spent it on travel, absolutely every single penny. And I don't regret any of it. I've gained a lot of really amazing experiences and all the things that I've, I've done and gone through. However, it definitely left me with zero on my bank account. So COVID hit. I moved to Whistler, BC. That's where my videos actually start. So you can check that out. My very first episode is me moving to Whistler. I did a ski season, ski bum life for two years. Everything went online for school. I couldn't do school online. I just don't operate like that. I need to be in a classroom. So I left, did the ski bum life. After two years, COVID stopped. Classes were resuming back in session. I decided to come back to Toronto to finish my degree. So I finished my degree, the service industry obviously was no longer the same and everything had shifted in terms of money. It became next to impossible to be able to save and it also just became impossible to survive, especially in one of the most expensive cities that I was living in. So I finished my degree, had zero money in my bank account, okay? And I was just making ends meet. I worked at a daycare and it was the worst experience of my life. I don't know how people do it. The environment was so toxic and no bullshit. Like I don't want to be in a toxic work environment. So definitely I learned a lot from that. And also working with little humans, unless they're my own, I don't want them. So I was working a minimum wage job and I was just barely making ends meet. I was exhausted working tirelessly day and night, which I know sounds familiar to a lot of people. The one thing that I was told by two very important people in my life is the idea of getting a line of credit. If you don't know what a line of credit is, a line of credit is basically a loan that you can get from the bank and it's usually a lot more money than you can get from a credit card. So 
I decided to open a line of credit, assuming it was going to be the most difficult process in my life. Mind you, I'm with one of the highest security bank systems in Canada. So I thought it was going to be a much more difficult process. And it really, really wasn't. The whole process took about a month. All I needed was one, a job, two, a letter of employment, and three, references, okay? Keep in mind, the job that I'm applying for to get this credit is a minimum wage job. All that being said, I still knew that this money was one, not mine, and two, I still had bills to pay. So I knew that no matter what I was doing in the time I was doing it, I'd still have to be able to pay that back. How was I going to do that? So in February 2024, <laughs> I don't even remember what year it is. <laughs> All the days blend together. So in February 2024, I decided to move to Bali with my cousin. My cousin had an online job. And at the time, I was still looking for work. And if anyone knows or doesn't know, Vietnam massively needs hires for teachers. You do need a university degree, but um, they're always looking to hire. So Vietnam was not my first choice, if I'm being honest, but it was an option and they want you like yesterday. So essentially moved to Vietnam, started a job and basically have just been using my line of credit in order to travel neighboring countries. My rule of thumb is if you live within proximity of certain areas, you should go and travel to those neighboring countries, which I have done. And mind you, I just bought a new phone. That is also not paid for outright. And number two, my computer, which is brand new, is not paid for outright. So moral of the story is do not pay for anything outright. People will say, but Alicia, I don't want debt. Okay, you don't want debt, but how are you gonna apply for a mortgage if you wanna buy a house at some point in your life? Everything around you has been built on debt. Not one single thing has built and processed and been bought out, aside from maybe your dinner. Your car that you drive, the house that you have is all built on debt, all built on some form of loaned money. And you know what? I've met people that said, I don't want debt, period. That's fine. But you will never, paying for everything outright will always take a lot longer to achieve. And what I've learned over the years, if you don't have the cash to blow, why not open a line of credit? It just makes way more sense to me. So it's just something to consider when you're thinking of whether or not you want to be in debt. Also, obviously evaluate your circumstances, where you're at in life, and if you can afford that debt. Maybe you're already in debt and you need to climb your way out of that first. Always prioritize, right? But it's something to be mindful of if you never had debt before, line of credit is a really feasible option for people that don't want high interest rates to pay. Um, having a credit card, my interest rate is around 20% and for my line of credit, it's around 12%. Massive difference. So I would 100% consider it and anyone can get it. If I can get it, you could get it. Another very interesting idea of how you can travel is a famous YouTuber couple that you guys may already know. Their name is Kara and Nate. So Kara and Nate came up with this really savvy idea where they opened travel credit cards, right? So you open a travel credit card, basically you get points, enough points to be able to fly basically for free. This is what they did. They opened around, I think 30 credit cards, I'm not sure, but they opened 30 credit cards and they flew on points. So they flew free for almost every country that they went to in their first year of travel. Now, that being said, uh, it didn't mean that they still didn't have bills to pay. So again, like none of this is for free. It comes with a cost. But if you have a means to an end or if you know that you can make money along the way, then you will be fine. I'm going to link that video below so you guys can check it out. Their journey is really 
interesting and how they had this travel hack idea of how they were going to be able to travel the world. So same kind of idea, but just a little bit different from what I am doing. And again, this is not just one way of going about traveling. There are so many other ways that you can do this, but if it has inspired you or in any way has sparked your interest in traveling, please by all means, try it, check it out. It's, uh, it's an opportunity for sure. The other thing that I just want to mention about travel hacking is your travel costs. Okay. Like you can stay at hostels. I've traveled all over the world and stayed at hostels. I like it more because it's more social. You still can do tours, but they do it at a group discounted rate. So it's more affordable for travelers and you get that social aspect and you still get the experience of <clears throat> being able to see and get to know the country. So those are things that I definitely recommend. If you want to live a bougie lifestyle and you really want to only stay in hotels, you're going to pay a pretty penny for that. So travel hacking, very important. And also being able to set yourself up so that you get something in return. I'm currently going to be processing a, a brand new credit card because the one that I currently have, I don't think benefits me enough in the way that I need it to. So I'm going to be changing that. Anyways, that's pretty much the whole story. Tried to keep it as short as possible and tried to keep it as simple as possible. These are just a couple ways that you can travel. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Now, I won't be traveling for a few months. As of right now, I need to be making some money, saving money, okay? Because it'd be very unrealistic for me to say, yeah, I booked a, a flight tomorrow to go somewhere, all right? It's just not realistic. But I will be planning a trip next year, 2025. I will not be telling you where because everything's still kind of up in the air, but I'm thinking February I'll be going somewhere, but I will not make any plans or share anything until that is set in stone. And with that being said, thank you everyone for tuning into this episode of my vlog. Thank you again for everyone who's continuing to follow me on this journey. I really, really appreciate you guys. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all of that, comment. And also let me know on in the comments what you want me to talk about more or less of. And I will do that for you guys. So with that being said, have a great day, guys. Bye.